because I think there's an imposter in the ranks. I've never seen this before. L literally. Um, none of the simulations had this. I, th I think they're sending a spy over, and I'm concerned. Into the black hole. Welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Life. If you're still enjoying it, drop a like. That'd be lovely. So, today we're going to do a couple of bigger chunks. Next couple of, ep next couple of episodes are going to have slightly more games in them as we start to start really churn into the season a little bit. Plus, I've got a little bit more time today and I want to give you guys a bit more value for money, I suppose. But one quick note, Tommy Williams has got a lower back stress fracture and is going to be out for around three months, which is not the best news in the world uh, because we're going to be a little bit light at left, uh, right back if Simon Defty was to get hurt. Concerning Wakeling, very rarely you just have to bite the bullet. His value on keeping you up is probably more than his transfer value. Uh, so unless you can get a good replacement, I say no. Plus, you might get a chance to be signed later on in the season when his demands change. So this is true. Um, we're obviously going to keep working on that, particularly now as, you know, the season it's done. He's still here. Burton, they came with one bid. I tried to put them up on it and say, you know, give us some decent money. And they basically said no and then never came back. I just had a region striker whose name is also Arian Kalantari. He was born on the same day. Um, must be one of the game developers. So actually, no, I've been informed that it's actually the founder of the Lad Bible. It's a game, in, it's a facing the game guy, uh, like Jordan Millwood, uh, who we had at, briefly at Uniao. Um, so yeah, that, that's a weird one. Um, I don't know how I feel about that one. BPK has that Bruno Bridges magic. He just seems to be effective when he plays at any level, regardless of his star rating. We seem to have one of these players virtually not every save, but every FM. I remember when Barry Fuller was a bit like that for me uh, with Wimbledon. Bruno Bridges is the best example of a player that played out of his skin and was way above his star rating and his attributes uh, when he played in the Premier League for Stockport when he was like a half-star player. So just very quickly, not going to show you the highlights uh, of this one. We won 3-0 away at AFC filed in the EFL Trophy, but it was not enough to see us uh, get like out of our group, frustratingly. Uh, City turned it around in their game and we went out to Tranmere on goals scored. If we'd have managed to score one more and Curtis Thomas nearly completed his hat-trick before, uh, right before the end there, we would have gone through. Money extra though, it's always nice. And at least no more annoying, stupid trophy no one cares about. Although I'll be honest, I found myself caring about it briefly towards the second half and there was a chance we could go through. So you never know. So Billum and Connor Teal are both suspended for this game and Tommy Williams is out. We're going to have to change things up a little bit, which is a bit annoying, but what can you do? Other teams around us have got well, we've got games in hand on them, basically. So we've slipped to 15th. I love that we're 15th in the league with a plus seven goal difference. It's a weird old league. Probably are going to make some changes. Now, one of the things that was suggested again was the idea of flop, uh, switching these over. And the reason I would pretend... If I was going to do it, I would do it on both sides because I want to make sure that the, the symmetry of the tactic remains the same. So I would switch these and these. Everything else is symmetrical, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now, unfortunately, we're still missing Connor Teal, so these two will also... Well, I'll maybe experiment with this in the off-camera games once we've got Connor Teal back, because these two are actually in their preferred roles at the moment as well. Um, unfortunately, we're also missing Billum. However, Jaden Forrester scored, uh, got two assists off the bench in the EFL Cup, and as a result, I'm going to give him a chance here, because I think he deserves it. BPK will also start, of course. So, bench, Dion George, Kai Forsyth, Zach Dobby, Kalantari, Galvin, Perez de Gracia, and Cartwright. Okay, so for some reason, um, <laughs> Nathan Thomas, George Thomas, the striker, we've got Curtis Thomas. It's... It's fully... It's Thomas Town, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Thomas Town. I'm fairly confident, really. They're struggling. We're doing okay. We are at home, though, so you never know. Now, I have had some suggestions on ways we could maybe improve our home form, particularly against poorer sides, because our tactic relies on a lot of counter-attacking play, which might be why we get results like the Forest Green one. And one of the things suggested was to try to control the game more. So I think the way I would... Oh, wow. The way I would go about doing that is by having work born into the box on, trying to slow the tempo down. Well, not even slow the tempo down, actually. Just having work born into the box on, I think, could be a, ma a major factor. That and moving to attacking from time to time a little bit more, just to get a bit more men up the pitch, start to control that possession a little bit more. Um, and I think in some of the worst, against worst teams, that could definitely be something to try out, in particular those home matches. And that's just poor defending. And oh dear, Defty's... We've actually really struggled to start with here. So if we're not doing especially well when it comes to half time in this game, I might be willing to try something out like that. I want to experiment with things a little bit more. Thomas the Tank! I nearly called him Thomas the Tank Engine then. And frankly, at times he is. So I guess if we were to control the game more, we'd go work onto the box and just drop that passing down a little bit more so we can play sort of more intricate stuff. The reason I don't like doing that sometimes is because I find that that tends to stop us from getting our really nice fast breakaways from time to time because the players will look for the shorter ball and more safe stuff rather than... But hey, we'll see what we do here. Wakeling's ball. Can he find the ball across? He's still got it. And it's cleared. Well, possession's back, but we haven't really created anything. And I think that's because, generally speaking, we tend to play better weirdly when we give up possession and then we can win it back and break on, team on teams. However, since we're going to try this for today's game, I'm going to up the tempo slightly and move to attacking since that seems to be like... the Yeah, we're just going to try it out. But I think, unless I see something drastic, I think I'm just going to stick with what we've been doing for now because we have still picked up some home victories. Um, well, one, <laughs> I think. We're sort of fighting for their lives down towards the bottom because I imagine it's pretty tight down there. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap. In fact, Fylde have started to slip quite a lot. Clark 
Get a block in. Don't let him roll it across. I don't know. Wow. Again with those shots. It seems about here. It seems like it's almost a guaranteed goal at times. Wickham now have the lead away at Whitport Athletic. Uh, I think I'm just going to stick to what we've been doing, to be honest. Like, I I'm sure that whatever works for some people, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'm going to just keep doing what I, what I don't understand, though, is why our DM here just starts moving further and further away from the guy on the edge of the area. <laughs> like, that's your bloke. That's that's your guy. And then he's got his head in his hands like, oh, I can't believe this has happened, boss. Lovely ball out for Forrester. Can he finally conjure something? And he's found, oh, lovely ball through. Kalantari and George. Oh, Dion George. Lovely effort to the back post. Adabati dinks one in. Knight. And it's tipped onto the crossbar by the goalkeeper. I think we've definitely improved since we just went to a more standard sort of what we do kind of approach. Adabati's ball in. And I think that's generally going to be my approach from now on. It might not always work, but today it seems like it was the right choice. Because it is always nice to have a backup plan, particularly in these sort of games where you think you should be winning, really. And Kai Force, ah, oh, there we go. Kai Knight gives us the equaliser. That's what we needed. Rocco Adabadi. Adabadi, lovely ball in. And I think that's a deserved equaliser. Kai Knight comes up massive, albeit from a corner. But it's about time he finally got... Actually, to be fair, he has scored two headers from corners this year, hasn't he? Bad defending from Wickham. And we finally get the equaliser. Looks like it... Oh, no. Maybe there's one last chance in this one. This would still move us up to 13th. But it's more dropped home points. Kalantari, nice little flick on. Thomas again for Jaden Forrest, who really does get forward well. And he's all the way through on a big save again by Bursk. And it looks like it is going to be a one-all draw here at Castle Park between us and struggling Wickham Wanderers. Yes, it is. Not the best result for us, but it's another point in the right direction, I suppose. Uh, we've still kept our excellent goal difference intact. And the main thing is we moved further clear of the relegation zone. We're seven points above the drop zone right now and seven points off of sixth. So it's kind of, we're basically slap bang in mid-table and that's fine. Right, big chunk of games off camera now. Not sure exactly how many or when we're coming back, but we'll find out, won't we? That's the beauty of it. Right then, guys, we're back. And, uh, well, we, we lost away at Struggling Swindon. I decided to go ahead and change the roles around in the midfield and so as, as and the strikers as well. Uh, Farquharson gave them the lead. But I thought I'd try it for the six games that we played off camera. And we might still try. I, I actually don't think I'm going to try it today. Um, because it, for whatever reason, we look much worse. We did manage to score a goal in this game, in fairness. Um, but it was very, very fortunate. The ball was tackled into the path of Jacob Wakeland to give us the equaliser. But unfortunately, Swinnon was straight back in front uh, not long after that. We were defend oh, we just, we're not creating anything near as much as we were before. Ball put across, boils at the back post. It was 2-1 Swindon. And yeah, it, it, for whatever reason, I think it's because having them on their wrong feet, not so much the strikers, but I'm still going to keep them how they are. because I'm going to move them back still. Also a free kick goal. I think because the midfielders are on their wrong feet, they tend to cut inside more rather than pushing out wide. And for whatever reason, it seems to make us play better. I think it's just one of those, if it ain't particularly broke, don't try and fix it. We did manage to get ourselves a victory over Dagenham, though, uh, which was quite nice. Uh, one, we've also surrendered a lot more possession recently. Wakeling then got through. But look at this from Jacob Wakeling, though. This is wonderful football from him. Gets the ball out wide, watches for the run of Curtis Thomas, who peels in between three defenders and grabs himself our second of the night. But we weren't done yet. As this, look at this. Wakeling takes it on the chest and knock it past the defender. This is just excellent strike play. He was phenomenal in this game. Curtis Thomas is up there. Wakeling doesn't even need him. 3-0 up against Dagenham and Redbridge. But again, we were better in this game, I've got to say. But this was really the only sort of bright spot in this entire period. We still managed to concede a goal from a corner in there, of course, because uh, it's just what we do. Out jumps the defender. Goalkeeper, again, just lets it go through his hands. It was after that, though, that things just really started to go off the boil and we just suddenly stopped being able to score. Although this was still very annoying. The goalkeeper kicks it down the pitch and then it just goes straight to their striker, even though we've got a defender there. And he's able to nip through and slot it home. Frustrating one. Oh, admittedly away at a good MK Dom size. But the problem is, these are the games before that we were looking a lot better in. And now we're not for some reason. Like, these are good sides where the attacking, like, counter-attacking style seems should work, but it just doesn't. And then we lost our home to Colchester with a penalty uh, goal. And Connor Teal is also now going to be out for quite a while, which sucks. Uh, the penalty was a bit of a weird one. I first didn't think it was a foul. And then it didn't look like it was in the area either. But Ashley Hunter was given the chance to get the win for Colchester. And we did not play well at all. We then followed that up with a nil-nil at home to Scunthorpe. Some points at least. But again, not showing any signs like we were going to score any goals. That's where the real problems have come from. So, yeah. And then against Leighton Orient, we did play a little bit better. But again, result just wasn't there. And we beat these guys away from home. Uh, quite No, at home earlier this season. Billum strike, well put into the back of the net. Goalkeeper was a bit poor this one we gave ourselves an early lead at least but then unfortunately we conceded another direct free kick not long after that keeper couldn't get down to it and it was one all we then won a penalty uh which Curtis Thomas was able to dispatch he's still scoring regularly sort of but not really and then naturally we were equalized against again this time from a corner uh, as the back post was overloaded comes straight at the goalkeeper who just bats it into his net from his knees and then unfortunately the sort of comeback if you like was completed by Leighton Orient in the first half uh, frustratingly balls ripped into the box and just put it at the edge of the box and then Civic absolutely thunders one in the top corner and all that leaves us sitting 15th in the league now um we've not won in our last four 
who are only four points above the drop zone now. And I think that's enough reason for me to just stick to what we were doing. We don't need to change things if it ain't broken. Uh, Coach Thomas still top scorer in the league, though. One of the best performers. Most man of the match awards. I still think we can pull ourselves back up a little bit if we just start to get a bit of form back. As for Blackhaven, they're sort of just plugging away. 12 points above the drop zone now in League One. They're in no danger of going down. Um, I don't think they're in danger of doing much else. They're kind of in a similar situation to us, just a bit further clear of the relegation zone. And now something slightly different. This has caught my eye um, because I think there's an imposter in the ranks. I've never seen this before. L literally, um, none of the simulations had this. I, th I think they're sending a spy over and I'm concerned. Because whenever I look at the youth intakes of both Blackhaven and Whitport on all of my simulations, every single player that was born locally was Whitport, always. Or Blackhaven, if you were doing Blackhaven. I never saw any cross-pollination, so to speak. So the fact that we've got a good young English midfielder from Blackhaven that's coming through the Whitport Youth Academy is a little bit worrying, I've got to be honest. I, I'm, I'm not sure what Thomas Stepanek's up to here. But nevertheless, we're away at Newport County, which is, again, not an easy game. They're above us in the league by six points. Um, we've just got to go and try our best, you know? I'm going to switch things back and see how we do. Because the strikers, I don't think, made much difference, but they've not really been scoring a great deal either. But I think this is the area where we've really changed things up. We're worse defense, a little bit better defensively in some respects. We're not creating as much as before. And I do also wonder if having uh, Curtis Thomas on the same side as Putman Kitely when he plays has some weird effect that works well for us. I don't know why, but I just feel like it might do. And obviously, because Connor Teal's injured, these two are going to be playing in these roles anyway. And we will switch these two back over, of course, to get them in the correct positions. I think when making content, sometimes it's quite difficult because you want to listen to the comments, but at the same time, you also want to just do your own thing. And I think what we had worked, and I'm not going to mess with it too much more because after all, it's got us this far. And we're doing well. We're doing well. Hopefully, we can start pulling out a few more victories and get things going. But I do still think we might struggle to pull ourselves out of this uh, downward spiral immediately. Maybe there's an instruction that's been removed from one of the players as a result of me switching the positions around. I might have to go check that. Oh, God, Chapman's through. Get your blocks in, lads. There we go. Good tackle. Because we've not been good today at all. Go on, here we go. BPK to finally bring this away for us. I mean, I think the confidence levels are a pretty low ebb right now. We got that one victory, but could not build on it. Into the channel for Billum. Come on. Get that cross in. He does. And it's all the way through for Putman Kitely. Better. That's more like it. Got into a good position that time. Adabati. It's a lot of bit, little bit of space for Defty. Uh, so he passes it to the centre back. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's freed up a bit of space. Pop McCartney's in again. Can he square it this time? No, but Defty might be able to find a cross. Thomas! Saved by Schofield. That's more like it. Another channel again for Baker. They're making a lot of overlapping runs and doing quite well with it. And all the way through, Pop McCartney clears it. Another long range strike, maybe? No. Nope. Here we go. Breakaway coming from Adabati, of all people. And not quite Lee. At least we're not losing so far. Long ball downfield. Thomas flicks it on. That's more like it. Finally, a bit of link up from the strikers again. Wait, Kling, and I think they got a little toe on that one. Nope. No, we didn't. Not the best first half, really. We're, we're really struggling for possession, but at least we're not losing to them, I suppose. They're dominating the ball by getting it up to their striker, and he's hanging on to it. I do wonder if we could just tight mark him and take him out of the game. It might give us a bit more of a jumping off point for the rest of the second period. At least bring the possession down a little bit. We can start to build on that in the next game. I'm not sure who it's against. I think it's actually against Bristol Rovers, which won't be easy at all. I think we might be experiencing just pure morale. Unfortunately, with the lack of victories we've had in recent matches, it's going to cause some problems for us, I think. And we need to try and pull our way out. Usually what happens then is you need to try and get some kind of a lucky result here and there. Um, so hopefully we can find one of those soon. Maybe today. You never know. Idris. Oh, my God. They really are pushing a lot of players forward. Oh, huge save from Thomas. Not Thomas. He's everywhere. He's bloody everywhere. I'm going to try and close the fullbacks down a bit more. I don't like to do that because it pulls us out of shape quite a lot. But today it might be our only option. But McCartley's not at the best game. He's had a few poor performances as of late, to be fair to him. And we still haven't got um, anyone to play in Defty's spot just yet. I'd happily take a point out of this game, quite frankly. Just try and get some balls in the box. See if we can create a bit of chaos for the final 10 minutes here. Although, really, it's been all them in the second half. And they've shown no signs of giving up possession. Usually, we uh, are quite good at winning that back off teams in the second half. But today, they've been dominant on the ball. I don't know if that's something they... Oh, no. What a save by Winterbomb. 84th minute is a real shitter for us normally. That's, that's the one time where we usually give up the winner. Cheeky one, Thomas's ball. Harding and a great save by Schofield. I think that was offside anyway, yes, but at least we showed something there. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Hume, please no. What a tackle from Adabati. George has got it. Kalantari, can he? He... Oh, he doesn't need to, because Cameron Evans has said... Right, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but four minutes. Oh, go on. One last chance. Win it in the 94th minute. Kalantari blocked and it's going to go out for a corner to us we've got one last chance here i mean a point would still be an okay result away at newport county but i feel like earlier this season we'd have done better um maybe we're just you know getting used to lead two out about his ball in and knight headed clear thomas bishop 
Oh, keep it. Oh, there we go. Nil, nil. Not the good, not the goodest performance there, to be fair. But we did get away with a point in the end, which isn't the worst result in the world. But we do need to pick up another win soon. Uh, we're riding high on that goal difference somewhat at the moment. We're still doing okay, though. Uh, five points above the drop zone now. Con containing ourselves in League 2. But you can see we're on a period where we barely lost. Albeit, there were some draws in there. But now, it's just one win in a long time. And not scoring anywhere near as many goals as we were before. And that's that was the main big thing for me. 11 points from 12 at home and 17 points from 13 away. But our away record has taken a massive hit lately for some reason. Might just be better teams playing against us, to be fair. So next episode, we're going to come back and start off away at Bristol Rovers. See if we can pull off some magic there at the Memorial Stadium. Um, it's unlikely, but you never know. Hopefully we can get a bit of form back because there's not a lot of games uh, time off in between. So if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be cool as well. I'll join you guys yeah, uh, on stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays too. Uh, usually, anyway. Not this week. Um, and I'll join you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.